Good afternoon. Welcome to my channel, Watercolor Painting in the Afternoon. I'm Beth. Today I'm taking some of my cheapest materials, that is this wood pulp paper, and I'm going to use its weakness to my favor. Uh, what you see me doing here is just squirting it down with water, and what that's going to do is warp the paper. It's going to make it uh, a big arch in the paper and as I spread it out you'll see the paper begin to lift up and form that arch and I'm going to use that to paint reflections. This is going to really arch up. This is nothing <laughs> in comparison to what it's going to be. This is nothing. See that arch. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to do then is wet down some of my paints. I've got two colors that I'm going to wet down first. Uh, green Appetite Genuine. We're going to work with that. That's a Daniel Smith color, so it's not a cheap um, paint, but it's very interesting. It granulates like crazy, and we're going to see what it does when we use it to paint a, um, a reflection. And I'm also going to use Cobalt Blue, and the Cobalt Blue is going to be for the sky, and then more um, a more watered-down version of it for the water, where the reflection will be. I'm just going to let you watch this. This is, um, it's a little streaky and it was a little bit hard to control because of the amount of water I put on the paper. I think probably, And now here, um, I'm turning the paper around and trying to paint the water. And I didn't want the water to be quite as dark as the sky, so um, not quite as much paint went on that. Now here is the Green Appetite Genuine. And what I mean when I say it granulates, you will see it almost immediately. The paint begins to separate out. So you see the yellows that were used to make Green Appetite Genuine. And you'll see uh, some of the blues and definitely just the, the graininess of the paint. This is just neutral tint that I put right there. Um, I kind of messed up with the neutral tint, but it worked out in the end. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. I wanted to use that a little bit to mark the edge of the water and probably needed to do that when it was a little drier. But it's okay. Uh, and then on the right side of the painting, I was thinking I wanted some kind of bare trees. So that's why I used only the neutral tint on that side. Now using my spray bottle again, just adding a little bit more water in a couple of places. And here, this is, I was trying to get this to run, the neutral tint. And boy did I succeed, because it really ran all over the place. But um, I did fix it, and it, you know, it turned out okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where um, a little too much of a good thing is not a good thing. So um, just be careful a little bit with this technique because these trees, I didn't want them to be so huge that um, it was unrealistic looking, you know. But anyway, I did fix that up a little bit. Ran a little bit too much.
And of course here I'm just using um, my paper towel to kind of dab out uh, some of the excess water and some of the excess paint. And I wanted to let that um, percolate for a minute on that side. So now at this point I can just kind of push down on the paper with my, with my fingernail. I was trying not to make a great big fingernail mark. And I took the corner of an old debit card and just scratched in some nice branches and trunks along the edge of the water. And at this point, if you, as you can see, when I lift up my finger, the paper's beginning to stay flat again, which is kind of nice because at this point, that's what I want. I don't want that big arch in it anymore. And here, um, what I'm doing is just taking a little bit of white gouache and going right along the edge where the water would be and making a little watermark. Because often there's a little highlight right where the water meets the land. And, um, you know, just trying to get that in there so that you are sure that you're looking at water and land. And I think I did go back and make that a little bit more apparent because that's kind of dim. All right, now with my very tiny little brush, little detail brush, I'm going to pick up some neutral tint and just uh, get some details, some finer details in there. I'm mixing the neutral tint with the green Appetite Genuine to get a very deep, dark green. To excuse my hand. I think I did move it after a moment. But I wanted to pull up some uh, trunks and some trees that are a little bit closer uh, so that I could push that green into the background a little bit, sort of as brush, you know, and shrubs and things like that. So I painted a few little trees um, up close. And one of the things that I did, I wanted to put leaves on the tree. I didn't want it to be a winter scene. So I wanted to put leaves on the tree. I did not overdo the branches. We're seeing this from a distance. So I kept the branches simple and um, kept the leaves you know, simple as well, kept the, the canopy of the tree simple by just dabbing in a little bit more green Appetite Genuine. And because my paper was mostly dry, you're not going to get that fading effect anymore. So the, the paint is going to fade out like that when you put it on something very wet. But now I'm putting it on really dry or drier paper. So it's not going to have that same granulating effect as it would if you put it on very wet paper.
At this point, I had not decided how many trees I wanted to put in this picture. Um, so I went ahead and I put some more on the other end of our peninsula or whatever you call that in the, uh, on the other side of the water. And I wasn't sure. It looked a little bit too matchy-matchy. You know, the, it looked a little bit too symmetrical. So I decided to put one more in, um, make sure that I wasn't doing, you know, doing something that would be um, too flat. Just, it, it doesn't draw your eye anywhere if everything is symmetrical. So I decided to put another tree on this far left side. All right, so at this point, what I want is to pull the reflections of these larger trees down into the water, and that's all I'm doing here. Making the reflection a little dimmer than what you see um, above the water. And I think with reflections, you can do this a uh, number of ways. You can either reflect the image just as you see it and try very hard to get everything perfect or um, you can uh, just kind of make it look like maybe the water is having some wind blown over it <laughs> you know something like that creating some ripples so that you don't see quite the same perfect reflection and that's what i'm going for because i am never going to get the reflection just perfect um, not going to happen. And I don't think you need to. I think you need to suggest it. Most people's eyes are going to fill in what you miss. Uh, of course, you know, you want to try to get it approximately the same size, approximately, you know, the same type of image that you started out with. Obviously, you want to do that. But you don't have to make it perfect. I promise. And as I'm finishing up here, um, just want to say a word or two about what, uh, what I was doing. I'm just trying to experiment and use different materials and uh, use some of my cheap paper. I let it do what it does best, which is to warp, you know, to make, to make kind of a mess that way and uh, use it to my advantage. And I used my debit card to scrape in some ripples in the water, and I've used um, my, my, my debit card also to scratch in some branches and some different things. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you will also uh, try using some of your cheaper stuff and see what happens. Try using uh, debit cards and and paint and cheap paper and just see what you can do with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.